There are a considerable number of ancient anomalies located within Egypt. These ancient feats of engineering litter sites and the quarries the stones were sourced and shaped at. And although many of you would have heard of Aswan Quarry, Elephantine may be a less familiar location to you, and for good reason. Not only are the pyramids one of the most perplexing, near perfectly constructed, and as yet unexplained ancient architectural accomplishments on Earth, but how an ancient civilization, supposedly placed within permitted known archaeological history, accomplished such a feat, or indeed why? What was their original purpose? Academic contradiction, a severe lack of anomalous artifacts explored, never mentioned or somehow conveniently go unnoticed. However, in the real world, beyond the boundaries of the fenced or so-called schools of education, thanks to our own work and the presentation of such a volume of inexplicable events artifacts, ruins or megaliths, along with many others allied within similar fields, independently funded researchers, investigative agents, and many more sometimes even noticed first by a viewer credited with its rediscovery within our coverage. Thanks to all this movement working to expose such enigmas, has meant that not only are these incredible characteristics now being documented, mentioned, popularized, photographed and studied more and more each day, now being recognized by more and more critically thinking individuals individually finding evidence of lost technologies that had until then either been undiscovered or deliberately overlooked by the funded academic. The vast catalog of unexplained architecture, again growing by the day, but also the often accompanying curious stone cuts, scars and striations, all clearly left by high-speed disc-cutting machine, a signature tool mark, identical to that which is left by modern-day power tools, along with the still absent demonstration of the methods used to construct the pyramids leads anyone to this ongoing and seemingly most controversial of arguments regarding the origins of the ruins found across Egypt. The Colossus of Memnon, each one weighing far over 1,000 tons, would sing every morning an amazing ability we have covered in a previous video, a curious characteristic reported all the way up until the Roman era. We also covered the thick layer of sea salt once found coating the pyramid's ground and underground caverns, along with a water line reported at around 40 meters up their sides, still visible during the Spanish invasion. This clearly suggests that the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx are in reality so old they even had once been submerged in ocean waters. An ancient ocean which over the eons has shifted leaving behind sediment in the form of the desert sands. There are many enormous ancient megalithic stones hidden in and around the three great pyramids of Egypt. Not only are there enormous ancient stones virtually hidden in plain sight, thus although walked across, largely overlooked, hardly ever mentioned, and never explained in regards to their transport and placement as modern academia will never be able to provide a logical, sound explanation for these feats. The casing stones, an area of interest we have explored and documented, not only displayed vastly different ages, but also construction methods and types of stones sourced and used. Ultimately, undeniable proof of efforts to preserve the outer stones of these incredible ancient pyramids later on within their history. Signature tool marks, unique features such as protuberances, masonry shapes, polygonal stonewalling, and many other features which we have discovered during our explanations into the relics of lost antiquity. Yet Egypt's most intriguing assets, and we feel the most baffling relics which all alternative historians should have within their debacle armory, are undoubtedly to be found within the once abruptly abandoned quarries. The unfinished obelisk found at Aswan, being one such relic, the most well-known of these incredible stones by a long way, not only is the obelisk over 1,000 tons, but also due to the identifiable scoop-like tool marks left upon its granite sides, a signature scarring 
which again, we have so far found, explored and shared this marking at many other ancient sites around the world. Who were the original builders of the Great Pyramids? Were they the same group that quarries Aswan? What tools did these people use to cut many of the relics still left at the Elephantine Island Quarry? How can anyone gaze upon such precision stonework and not ponder how did he accomplish such an incredible finish with such hard stone, with such soft chisels and those made of copper? Not only do we find the currently attested tale of events vastly incomplete, but in many ways virtually impossible. Predictably, we are often confronted with an illogical explanation as to the origins of many unexplainable ruins. Yet Egypt, in particular Aswan and Giza, were clearly the work of a group capable of working and building with 1,000 ton plus stones. With columns of pink Aswan granite, weighing over 14 tons each, over 10,000 kilometers to Baalbek. Is this connection mere coincidence? Or are the builders of said sites connected somehow? Possibly one and the same? Questions we get closer to answering every day. We find it highly compelling. Neolithic man is often talked of as if he were a very different being to that of the modern man. Throughout the modern era, a well-funded, close-knit, often aristocratic academia has portrayed Neolithic man as an illiterate figure, often leopard print toga-wearing, club-wielding, bearded nincompoop, a grubby, forceful, filthy beast who had barely managed to master the art of creating fire let alone complex language or societal behaviors. This paradigm of us emerging for the first time from the last ice age, developing into the complex, advanced civilization we find ourselves in, means that Origins of Man is somewhat of a closed book. For to preserve this influential dominance within modern society, anything which contradicts this long-attested claim is simply thrown out, discarded as an anomaly and any who pursue such avenues of inquiry a mere conspiracy theorist, this regardless of the evidence we so eagerly put forth in our defense. Countless still existing astonishing anomalies, unexplained, simply baffling feats of ancient engineering, so often covered here on our channel, either merely ignored or claimed as absent an explanation as to how the work of our well-studied more recent ancestors people who were simply incapable of completing such mammoth tasks. Many of these ancient ruins, claimed as more recent achievements, we feel, possess sufficient evidence to support far greater ages littering many said sites, clearly built using far more advanced precision technologies and Neolithic sites are of no exception. We believe here on the channel that the size of many of these highly eroded prehistoric stone trilithons and indeed stones contained within many enormous dolmens, are also left by this ancient group. Dolmens made using similar, if not identical techniques throughout the world, from Scotland to Ireland to Japan, all of similar design and possessing inexplicable features, board entrances, multi-ton megaliths. It is as if this group still possessed the knowledge of how to lift and work such stones, but had lost the technologies used to carve with precision. It is as if they were a surviving remnant of a once more capable or more precisely better equipped civilization. How did this ancient people, academically claimed as never having had any contact, build such similar structures? Or perhaps, more importantly, and the feature which initially attracted us to Neolithic ruins, the size of their stonework. Megaliths often incorporated into their structures, forming trilithons or entrance tunnels with top slabs upon dolmens, sometimes up to 8 feet aloft, weighing well over 100 tons. Our discoveries at Newgrange in Dunor in Meath, Ireland, with a slab tunnel entrance, like so many Neolithic granges and barrows, regardless of their immense size, once precisely aligned them with solstices yet they remain mostly buried and thus most conveniently concealed. Some argue that the most impressive Neolithic dwellings can be found dotting the Japanese landscape. However, we feel 
the most archaeological interesting of Neolithic sites, dot the United Kingdom, France, and some areas of the US, yet particularly Scotland and Ireland. Sites which have fragments of ancient symbols left within, celestial alignments, and a similar pattern decoration or possibly coded message which crop up over and over, especially one found all over the world, of a strange enigmatic spiral. And although usually found sparsely decorating Neolithic sites, barrows, and internal earthworks, its reoccurrence so regularly must indicate it as once having been significant and important to them in some way. Yet for some reason, Gavernus is undoubtedly the most spectacular of them all. This little shared ruin displays this symbol significance in their carvings as seemingly fanatically overwhelming. Located in France, to have so many of these patterns, clearly arranged in careful and concise manners by a people capable of aligning 100 plus ton rocks with pinpoint accuracy, we feel should be perceived as a very deliberate and important undertaking, perhaps in an attempt to convey a message to a future people a people far removed from themselves, in terms of language. A fact they may have fully understood, having, as we believe, experienced global cataclysm within living memory. So encoded messages, yet to be deciphered or even recognized as such, hidden within symbolism rather than writings. Are Gavernus's spirals mere decoration? If so, why go to such great efforts? Are these spirals an ancient code? Possibly a warning, a message yet to be unraveled. Whoever created Gavernus, and for whatever purpose, remains a mystery yet to be solved. Gavernus is a place very much still unexplained, yet very rarely shared academically. As such, it is a place we find highly compelling. Multiple sites nowadays are often, due to their immense age and their impossible characteristics yet to be explained, their size and precision, although clearly of an artificial as yet unexplainable nature, alas, if it contradicts modern paradigm, is deliberately overlooked and masked, or when claimed as a permitted known world history group's work, is always absent methodological explanations as to how they achieve these feats. Academics controlled via financial and vocational security ultimately becoming the arch enemy of a field that should be dynamic in nature, ever-changing, expanding, and accurate. A pioneering pursuit into the mysteries of history, and indeed ourselves, in regards to true historical fact. A career of submissive deceit, many presumably went into the field with good intentions, yet quickly learnt that they must toe the mainstream line if they were to survive. A theory that they all must know is fiction, they in unison defend and continue to push as conclusive fact. When the truth is, we have barely scratched the surface of the history of ourselves, or indeed the universe, the place we call home. The task of shipping the Lamassu would have shown the curators of London Museum, and indeed all involved and all interested in this undertaking, just what an incredible feat the transportation of these statues must have once been, for the museum chose a mere modest statue and the arduous nine-month task, along with the custom-built ramps, would have shown them what we claim is clearly fact. They were fully aware of the unexplainable nature of the monuments and the mystery of how they transported them more than a century ago. So why all the secrets? Why hide our past? If we were introduced to the real mysteries currently hidden regarding life, it would inspire, free, and help so many people on their journey through life, as it enables us all to pursue a logical explanation in regards to where we all came from, or indeed why we are here. Many sites dot the earth, which have either experienced cataclysm, sea salt halfway up the pyramid sides, inner chambers coated, Marine shells found around the Sphinx's base, a mega metropolis recently rediscovered, abandoned, and reclaimed by the jungle of Guatemala, which once contained over 10 million civilians. Many other sites, mostly quarries due to the unfinished processed stones that were underway, 
display abandonment of said work abruptly. Thus, not only is there evidence that can be found throughout the earth of past cataclysm and quarrying undertakings seemingly left, as if the culprits vanished, it is clear something happened. However, although if dated at more than the permitted chronology of man is denied as artificial, regardless of the obvious fact they were man-built, this same field, geology, have, however, become unwitting, unpredicted ally to the channel's overall mission. In other areas of our investigations, their dating of water redistribution, for example, how rivers, seas, and ice radically changes location geographically over thousands of years, and due to this geology accurately dating when an area became submerged. The changing of the seas and the date in which these events occurred, with still flooded sites worldwide, a number of which we have so far covered. Bimini Road being one such anomaly, one of these artifacts that although submerged, thanks to academia's astute studies into the dates at which water levels changed, allows for dates far earlier than currently attested timelines of man can allow. Due to these dates, and the fact that they were clearly once built upon dry land, gives each ruin a minimum age far older than academia can ever admit to. Floodings dated by these same geologists, who were crucially initially unaware of their existence, have dated many submerged ruins, including a number of pyramid complexes, at far over 10 to 20 thousand years old, with some floodings dated as occurring sometimes upwards of hundreds of thousands of years ago. For many of these sites, due to them not having been re-inhabited and left to the elements since their original abandonment, are clearly intelligently created ruins with clear artificial origins, door cuts, right angles, even polygonal masonry, all denied as anything but geological by those who have even been there, yet again, due to Gornia Shoria's immense size, sediment buildups, thus clearly prehistoric age, clearly proves any denial of artificial origin as an obvious conspiratorial lie. The fact that modern paradigm doesn't tell of any advanced civilization at this location within known history, thus no archaeological footprints left by a later people, relics which would have allowed academics to label said groups as undoubtedly the builders, and the undeniable evidence of prehistoric age, they must overlook such evidence it must be overlooked or dismissed. The better at this you are, the more popular these institutions make you. If no civilization was ever recorded re-inhabiting an area at any time throughout permitted history, thus no archaeology, it is far too controversially old for academics to study. So the denial continues. Yet, ironically, the undeniable is the ultimate weapon, slain by their own proverbial sword. The strategy of deceit is always succeeded by the truth, for the truth is grounded, unchanging, immovable, and founded upon a solid foundation. When such an occasion arises, the mere introduction of logical honesty, due to it being the truth, is far too fitting and in reflection of our regular expose of the lies littering modern teachings of history. The truth sticks. It resonates. Once the truth is exposed, it never dies. It is immortalized and unchanging. All we have ever wanted is for our viewers to ask themselves the questions we painstakingly search for the answers to ourselves, and we have dedicated a number of years of extremely hard work in amassing such a vast collection of stories, evidence, and other aspects supporting our work regardless of MSM's reluctancy to ever promote, popularize, or pursue such subjects within their studies, papers, journals, or articles, those towing the line of illogical dating and explanations for origins must deny the obvious artificial nature it's one or the other. We find all of these things highly compelling. The Modern Day Institution Man's way of organizing belief systems into their different clans, cult-like attitudes, often driven by an existential perception, specialisms of some form or merely a naturally occurring passion. They are either built around a certain series of events, 
or an apparent fact or claim, which stand as the cornerstones of said institution. It is therefore within the profiteers of said ideology's interests to not only suppress any evidence that may surface that would make their treasured institutions crumble to their very core foundation, but to actively destroy said relics whenever one gets an opportunity to do so. The Bamian Buddha, for example. Apparently this monstrous carving, perfectly bored into a sheer rock face in the Bamian Valley of central Afghanistan, is not only a relic, which we hypothesize, was left by a now lost civilization, but due to the facial features once masterfully depicted upon the statue, removed at some later time within history, carved flat, not only making its identification as Buddha questionable, it was for some reason completely destroyed during the Iraq War. Its destruction, I propose, supports our prior posit of it indeed being that of a lost civilization's work, this being the sole motive for such actions. Interestingly, hidden voids found behind the carving, if it were indeed a solid carving, as one would have once presumed when gazing upon it, how were these hollow chambers once placed behind said carving? Additionally, not only do most modern institutions deny any of the evidence we so often put forward on our channel, often in regards to a past lost civilization, but fields such as geology is simply actively writing off countless ancient sites and anomalies as simply geological coincidences, their existence being an impossibility according to already established, supposedly concluded chronology for human civilization. One reoccurring strategy, which I like to call the pareidolia effect denial, has befallen countless sites of interest. One of the most hotly debated, being the face on Mars, now simply dismissed as a trick of light, the intriguing pyramidal features nearby, which also somehow align with Pleiades. This denial strategy has condemned other said features here on Earth, some of which found in remote places that, according to modern academia, have simply never been inhabited. Thus, regardless of the artificial nature of such places as Gornia Shoria, must be dismissed as mere coincidental geological features. The ruins clearly immense age, often used, in an unfortunate twist of fate, as support of such claims, as nature eventually reclaims all. Thus, the older the ruin, the easier this said denial strategy is to argue. That is, until now, in a modern era, where modern technology now allows us to collect a massive amount of information on simply anything, unexplained features, parts, and many other advanced unexplained legacies of an antiquity, once hidden, now shared far and wide, evidence which flies in the face of modern paradigm. This Sharanian is yet another of these curious, clearly immensely old anomalies that regardless of its form, once being carved from extremely tough rock, maybe this is why our lost ancestors built with such enormous stones, and did so in an as yet unexplained, yet clearly highly advanced way, known as polygonal masonry. Perhaps they built like this so that their footprint here on our planet be long-lived, designed to deliberately be resistant to the elements, to reach us now in the modern day giving all of us an opportunity to understand the real history of our Earth, regardless of what others would like. We find all of these things highly compelling. Osaka Castle is one of the most intriguing of all of Japan's forgotten wonders. A place we have covered in the past, it was, we believe, like so many other inexplicable sites around the world, re-inhabited by our most recent of ancestors, placed within an academically permitted timeline of events. A chronology that, if one wishes to succeed in the mainstream, must toe the line of. For if one goes against the grain and explores the site with a critical mind, one can clearly see it contains a number of surviving features, which not only displays lost knowledge, thus the work of a lost civilization, which at some point in the very distant past built ruins all around the globe. Building countless polygonal ruins which have, due to their incredible construction technique, fortunately survived into the modern era. However, 
It is not just its polygonal foundations, which show clear evidence of these elusive and consistently denied lost ancestors. Octopus rock, for example, also sometimes known as the drum stone, is the largest megalithic stone found within the walls within the castle's grounds. This giant stone, just like those of Baalbek, is enormous. Estimates for its weight range from 100 to 300 tons, although it could, of course, be far heavier. However, even at these conservative estimates, any explanation of how ancient man accomplished such feats remains elusive. For the fact remains, the stone is of an incredible size, and to this day, its placement, along with many others found throughout the world, remains unexplained and unknown. So, for one to conclude that this stone's use, its quarrying, transporting, and placement within this wall, was done by our less capable, more primitive post-Ice Age ancestors, yet all these methods of building and lifting, the knowledge of how to do such tasks, somehow simply vanished through the ages. All of which now remaining a mystery even with computer technology. An explanation still evades us. Thus, to conclude this to be anything else than that of a relic, left by a far older, now lost civilization's work, we believe would be highly illogical, and should appear illogical to anyone with a capacity to dissect the purposes for these actions, taken by an academia claiming to hold all the answers. All the while, actively concealing or ignoring any conflicting controversial evidence, truths that due to their belief in their power, laying within their reluctance to ever admit an incorrect hypothesis for the origins of species or the timeline of man. Thus, this doubling down on fallacy merely makes their persistence at sticking to said posits not only a damaging conspiracy, which robs us all of our heritage, but can also be perceived as an attempt to conceal anything which could alter the status quo. The octopus rock is an incredible feat of ancient engineering, and one, just like that of the polygonal masonry techniques that can be found at countless other sites the world over, is clearly a relic of a forgotten past, accomplished with the use of forgotten technology and knowledge. Just how big is octopus rock? How old is it for that matter? And how did our ancient ancestors accomplish these feats? As our research deepens and our studies widen, our target, that of a currently hidden lost civilization, becomes clearer in the mind every day, and it is only a matter of time before they are fully rediscovered. To deny such facts will eventually become too ludicrous. It is a journey of discovery which is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. When an ancient ruin is academically studied, it will often be attributed as the work of a far more recent, already studied, thus previously permitted group placed within known history, often a group simply incapable of such undertakings. Furthermore, not only do many sites hold evidence of a far older yet far more advanced builder having once been responsible for their construction, but such sites can often share characteristics with ancient ruins found far away, features from a said site also found on another continent on the other side of the globe. False doors, for example, found over countless ancient ruins spanning much of the world. This reoccurrence, along with many other similar signature features, are far from mere coincidence and can only be explained by a past, intercontinental, highly capable lost civilization, as we have postulated in the past in regards to many factors indicative of their megalithic legacy. Metal clamps, identified on differing continents, varying in style and composition relative to what was presumably readily available, so although they differ in style, the knowledge of how to create and use such ancient technology had clearly been the work of the same civilization. The pyramids of Uymir, for example, are six rectangular pyramids you would more than likely have never heard of, and most certainly would not have been taught of their existence by modern mainstream academia. Built from lava stone without the use of mortar, they are uncannily reminiscent of many structures within the South Americas. They are located in the districts of Chacona, 
part of the town of Uymer, on the island of Tenerife in the Canary Islands, Spain. The structures have been attempted to be dismissed as nothing but 19th century buildings, argued as the byproduct of contemporary agricultural techniques. Yet their infamous shape and the signature building techniques incorporated into said structures are undeniably found elsewhere on Earth. Other pyramids employing the same methods and materials of construction can be found in various sites on Tenerife. In Uymer itself, there were nine pyramids, any yet, regardless of academics attesting to them being no more than a century old, only six of the pyramids survive to this day. In 1990, adventurer and publisher Thor Heyerdahl became aware of the Canarian pyramids by reading an article written by Francisco Pedron in the Tenerife newspaper Dario de Avisos, detailing the quote, real pyramids of the Canaries. As Heyerdahl had hypothesized a transatlantic link between Egypt and Central America, which is a subtle way of saying a now lost yet once global superpower who once ruled the waves, he became intrigued by the Uymer pyramids and relocated to Tenerife. Heyerdahl hypothesized that the Canarian pyramids formed a temporal and geographical stopping point on voyages between ancient Egypt and the so-called Mayan civilization's ruins, a claim we agree with. Yet we posit that this contact was not between the Egyptians and Mayans, but was one and the same force, a far older, now lost, world-conquering civilization, an ingenious group who not only passed on their wisdom to every corner of the world, but even built in ways we are yet to understand. Unexplainable anomalies litter many ancient ruins to this day. Heyerdahl had predictably initiated a controversy with historians, esoterics, archaeologists, astronomers. Most of mainstream academia staunchly oppose such claims. By suggesting such an hypothesis, which flies in the face of already established paradigms, his research was predictably never pursued further than Heyerdahl personally took it. Yet I feel he succeeded in publishing a ruthlessly honest opinion in regards to the ruins, regardless of what was already apparently established as fact. And along with our research within Bosda Caves, and the similarities, differentiations, and other investigative strategies utilized to support such an argument of a now-lost world-going super-civilization, we feel the evidence for our case is now all but overwhelming. There are far too many connecting factors to simply claim coincidence, and as the proof of this past civilization's capabilities becomes more apparent and in turn researched, the closer we become to finally finding these now lost ancestors. It is a pursuit for the truth, which we find highly compelling.